Welcome to F. Allen Alive, coming to you from Metro Detroit, where there is no waiting in the voting line. What's up? This is George McKinney, celebrity makeup artist, and you are watching the F. Allen blog, his ignorant point of view. So this was the scene this morning at the polling station in City Council District 5 That's where I went to there. vote today. Yeah, those are a lot of people there. None of them are voters. They what? are campaign workers for the various candidates. And uh, they're all camped out by law a thousand feet from the door of the polling station. And they are handing out flyers for candidates who maybe didn't invest a lot of money in actually campaigning in the neighborhood prior to today. So running that line was like running through a, a line full of uh, panhandlers going to the bus station. Well, it definitely wasn't a Cedar Point line. I thought they might have been celebrating the... Uh or, you know, celebrating the, the nomination in second place of Mike Duggan, the barber. Right. I don't think Mike Duggan, the barber, is going to be second place. And uh, it's not 8 o'clock yet, so we can't tell what the progress has been. And I think that there's going to be some time before anybody's declared a winner in the primary. But uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see that we finish up with a... Um, Mike Duggan, not the barber, and a Benny Napoleon head-to-head -head candidacy for the fall. Well, we'll see. Uh, did you guys vote today? Um, what do you think about the voter turnout? Do you think there should be uh, more? I think that your vote counts even more in the primary because there's so few people. I mean, just think about it. Three people voted today. If you would have voted, you would have had 25% of say of what could happen. Well, I mean, you know. And if you didn't vote, the real question is why didn't you vote? I mean, I'm sure there are those of you who are registered. I mean, you got registered so you could vote for President Obama. But you're registered, but you haven't voted since then. So why didn't you go to the polls today? Send us an email and let us hear why. And you can send that email to me at F dot allen at emmy dot com it's right here on the screen so um before we go on and talk about anything else um we have a bit of a conundrum and it is that we don't know exactly what to call the show i, I suggested to f allen that we call it f allen alive and you and you saw the little clip with george our celebrity makeup artist who called it f allen's blog so I'm going to ask everybody to um, email us with a suggestion for what we should call the show. Obviously, F. Allen is the personality, and um, I'm his sidekick. Well, not his sidekick. Yeah, more like a Robin. Whatever. We need to figure out what we're going to call the show. So I'm inviting everybody to contribute by making your suggestion. I'm sure we'll get a lot of dumb ones. I'm sure we'll get some that are absolutely hilarious. I'm looking forward to your emails. So hit us up, f.allen at me.com with your suggestion. And I'm going to go a little bit further because we communicate with each other a lot on Instagram and on Facebook. So I'm going to also drop those links right here on the screen as I'm talking. You can hit me up on Facebook or you can add me with one of your pictures on Instagram and hashtag it name of Alan show okay and um, I'm looking forward to seeing some of your suggestions it'll be interesting to see what they send in okay. all right so now um, Kevin Orr who who is a topic that we like to talk about apparently has commissioned Christie the auction house to come in and appraise all of the art at the Detroit Institute of Art he says he's not going to sell it. He just wants to know how much it's worth. What do you think about that, Alan? Well, if he's not going to sell it, it's always good to know, you know, how much stuff is worth. I know so many guys walk around here with, you know, nickel highlight necklaces to think it's sterling silver or even platinum or palladium for that matter. So sometimes it's a good, good idea to know what you have and what it's worth is. Yeah, but it's art. It's not, it's priceless. Even if you could put a value on it, it's priceless. So if you're not going to sell it, if it's the legacy of Detroit, 
why would you even bother to appraise it? I don't know, man. I got some old ass shoes that are priceless because I'm not going to sell it. Over $200 million. That's what was spent by the owner of Amazon to purchase the Washington Post. It was the Washington Post, right? It was the Washington Post. That is the primary newspaper in Washington, D.C. And uh, Bezos is the guy's name. He's the founder of Amazon. I know a lot of us shop on Amazon. But he didn't actually use Amazon money to buy the newspaper. He used his own money. And he bought it at what you know some people might consider a deal at $250 million. Two hundred and how many million? Fifty. Two hundred and fifty million dollars, which is kind of a deal for a newspaper. But the Washington Post is actually losing a little bit of money. Every year they're losing a little bit of money. But the interesting thing is, the really interesting thing is that Bezos is so rich that he could lose a hundred million dollars a year for a hundred years and still have a billion dollars left over. Oh, okay. So for all those people that's trying to find some rich sugar daddy, go look at Amazon. It's 9.49 on election night in Detroit, and Mike Duggan, the barber, is at home watching the election on TV. Um, he said that just because he's home doesn't mean he's going to stay at home. He's contemplating going to the victory celebration for Mike Duggan, not the barber, at the Athenaeum. He thinks maybe he'll go have a couple of drinks and hang out with his peeps. Oh, yeah, his peeps will definitely be there. No, his peeps won't be there Mike at Duggan's all. Mike Duggan's a former prosecutor. He probably could recognize that felon that, you know, that, that carjacked me the other day. But let's talk about the voter turnout, though. Yeah, um, voter turnout today was much better than was expected. At 5.30... The turnout had gotten all the way up to, get this, 13%. And they are expecting that by by uh, the end of polling today, which was 8 o'clock, that uh, the turnout would be as high as 17%. And if you don't think 13% is really a high number, imagine that it was, your ta if it was sales tax. <laughs> okay. <laughs> If it was sales tax. That would be a high number. That would be a very high number. Yeah, so let's pat ourselves on the back, Detroit. 13%. Now, now I, I guess I guess in defense of 17%, we have to consider that in a presidential election year, in, on average, voter turnout is only 33%. That means 33% of all registered voters actually show up to decide who's going to be president. Do you know how much your vote counts when it's that few many, when it's that few people making that choice? Yeah, I guess your vote counts more. I just think it's tragic that you know the one thing that they gave us when they finally did let us off the plantation, we don't really use. I mean, but when they gave us the vote, they really did split their stock, didn't they? Well, they really did because what happens if all black people, all African Americans, go to the polls and vote? What would happen then? We get a pretty crunk president. Crunk? <laughs> okay. Today's Instagram post of the day, or should we even say social media post of the day, is going to come from me. Because it's election day and, I, and there wasn't that many people around the election polls when I was in there. I was kind of in there and out. I took a moment and I snapped a picture of the ballot now. Even though I didn't put the pen down on who I voted for, you know, I still left that kind of mysterious. But, you know, uh, if you guys got a, uh, if you guys see a post or an, a social media post that's really funny or thought provoking, go ahead and, and, and link me to it at F. Allen Young if you're on Facebook or at F underscore Allen if uh, you're on Instagram. I'll take you a look know, at it. You know the vote doesn't count unless you actually fill in one of those circles, right? Oh, well, I filled it out on the back. All right, this is the part where we kind of um, shout out a couple of people that visited us in the studio today. Uh, they make the studio run, so it's nice to give them an acknowledgement. Today, we had a visitor, Sharon. She came by to get some business cards to promote her Botox and filling service. She's over there in Ferndale. Uh, we had a uh, a call in over the phone um, visitor. Uh, the, it's a new clothing store called Wink, 
and they're in Southfield. You want to be able to check them out. They're opening up soon if they're not already open. Uh, special shout out to Bouncing Off the Wall. Does thousands and thousands and thousands of flyers through us. We really appreciate that. And Trisha, hairstylist, is stopped by today. Also want to give a special shout out to Teresa from T Styles for coming and doing a photo shoot with us, as well as Candace Slay. Always on time, always on point. We got to love that. And George McKinney, who gave us a, a special intro today, shout outs to you as well. One last thing before we go. Something to think about as we leave. If people assume that a man with big hands and big feet has other big parts, what do we assume when a woman has big hands and big feet? And she's got the same big part, or maybe he's got the same big part. And why do we have to question her gender just because she has big feet? You inferred. You you implied? Can't help what you infer what I imply. Well, when you say he, if I asked about a she. Mm -hmm. Right, exactly. So, here we go. So, you want a she with big parts? No. Um, it was just a question, Alan. Okay. I'm not answering it. Well, Hit we it. already know you're phobic. Hit him on his email. Yeah, I'm... Hit I'm, him on his email. I'm retarded phobic. A retarded phobia. Later. <laughs> it's a wrap.